we identify the best practices in technology, Scrum, and DevOps. We call them rules because it sounds cool. The way the rules are optimized is specifically for the end purpose of giving the client good software in a reasonable price. SSW's mission is to figure out the best way to do everything. Put it on the server. It's such a competitive edge that we have these rules. And the fact that we make them public is a bit mad, honestly, because this is our IP, and this is why we're better than a competitor, and yet this is available to all competitors. So I hope there are no competitors watching this video. I always find it um, enjoyable talking to ex-SSW people, and I am always curious which rules they continued using. I do actually still indent, yeah. <laughs> it's not just the choice of the technology. It's also the best practices that go around it. How do you implement it? What's the best way to implement it? And I think that's where the rules really come into their own. When you're just coming into the industry, everything's pretty daunting, right? There's a lot of things to try and learn. And a lot of the time in, in larger companies, there's not like a clear defined process or a way to learn things, right? And, and the SSW rules really gives a really great starting point for that. The biggest benefit to developers is that there's tested rules or tested processes and developers can pick these up and get experience from other people's years of experience and learn quickly. When you join SSW, we have this magical experience where the first uh, several weeks are not working. You are sitting, going through sugar learning, which takes you through different rules in a certain order. I'd say 50% of sugar learning is just linking off to public rules. So, you know, this is the best way to do this, this is the best way to do that, this is the best way to do that. Anything that's generic enough to be a public thing that anyone can use is in the rules, and then only very specific SSW does things, you know, you send it to this particular email address or whatever, then that's in sugar learning. The rules really help you come to a beautiful baseline. But generally speaking, you get two, three great developers, you put them together, and you realize after a little while that there's a fair few sprints that are required before they really figure out how to talk to each other or even uh, agreeing on architectural decisions for software. We hear a lot of horror stories about people not doing version numbers correctly on their files or attaching documents to emails instead of linking them and having version hell where you're not sure which is the latest version. You've got emails, people sending emails where they have no idea, is this a task for me? Is it a task for someone else? Is this just an FYI? What, what is this email? You've got a whole inbox full of emails where you need to spend a lot of like mental cycles just figuring out what am I supposed to do with this? We don't have that problem at all. It's, it's beautiful. Like I, I get way too many emails. I'm sure everyone gets way too many emails, but I read them so fast because they're all in a format that I'm expecting. I can see immediately, is this a done email, a task, an FYI email? Uh, basically, that's pretty much the only three kinds of emails I ever get. You know, if it's an FYI, read, delete. If it's a task, do it and then reply done and delete. If I've given someone else a task, I know that they're going to reply back done. I don't have to chase them. One of the first rules you learn when you're sending emails is to use numbers on tasks. Usually when people start, they have a bit of friction doing that. But, you know, by the end, everyone's doing it because it's such a clearer way of communicating with people. You know, we've just got those norms that are just in place that allow us to be so efficient and it would be extremely painful if those went away. We're always inviting feedback. Um, it's, it's part of our process. We have retrospectives every week in our sprints uh, and we do something called check by where you, if you're writing an important email, you'll just get the person next to you to quickly have a look or, some, or a subject matter expert to quickly have a look and add checked by whatever the name is at the top. Um, and we just, have gotten to the point now where we're so used to that, that there's no ego about it. So the one I've spent an outrageous amount of time on is three steps to a PBI, so product backlog item. And it essentially says, hey, just make sure the thing's ready before you start working on it. Branch your code, work on it, get feedback on your work, merge the pull request and you're done. So the rules are all built on, uh, on top of GitHub. So similar to Wikipedia, anyone can log into the rules and go, I don't agree with that one. I'm going to put in a pull request for a change. Uh, and then the owners of the rules can look at it and go, oh, yeah, no, that is better. And just approve the pull request and it merges through. It's guidance in some areas. And it's absolutely, unequivocally, obviously the best way to do it in other ways. And, and I think it was from, I don't know, like mid 90s or early 90s or something like that. And, and it was rules to better car, right? How to be more efficient in your car. 
I loved it. <laughs> he had set up this metal bracket to put his laptop on while he was driving so he could just look over at his laptop while he was driving. It was brilliant. <laughs> Probably uh, these days, not an optimal behaviour. They're not immutable. They, they do change. They do get archived because they're not pertinent anymore. We were changing one today on, you know, um, catching exceptions. Not because the technology has changed, but to try and change the wording so it was more accessible and there was more rationale behind it. There's other ones in there where, at the time, this was the way to do things. Well, times change, technology changes. Now, here's another way of doing things. Part of the challenge is you have uh, people who've been here for a little while, they've just turned up, they've just read the rules, right? You've got people who've been here for 10 years. They came in and they read it 10 years ago, and sometimes something big changes. At the moment, we're going through the churn of, of huge new models of AI coming out every, every week, right? So Stable Diffusion came out alongside Mid Journey, alongside Dali. There's a whole bunch of different image editing uh, options now. We've got designers, we've got developers, we create a lot of artwork within our software. So we wanted everyone to know about this straight away, right? So we wrote the rule, we made sure it was right, and then we did uh, something called chewing the fat, which is where we send it out to the entire company, all 100 staff, get that email, and then they read the rule, there's often a video on that rule as well, and they get to try it out, they play with it, they, they uh, have a conversation thread on GitHub where everyone's putting in their comments, their two cents, all learning from each other. So every Friday, they're kind of pointed at the next most important thing that they should know, whether it's about you know, data engineering or you know, image generation and AI models. We had a whole thing on prompt engineering. So whatever the latest best practices are that we think is generic enough that the whole company should know about it, every Friday, we give them 15 minutes of kind of upskill time. <laughs> when a developer comes to your company, you really want them when they leave to say that, you know, I've improved SSW. You know, SSW is a couple of steps up from where it was. You know, we didn't have this size client or we didn't do this complicated project. And I am several steps up from where I was. Before I came here, I couldn't run uh, a project. I wasn't a scrum master. Uh, I, I, had, I hadn't done presenting. I hadn't spoken at conferences. Uh, I am a miles better communicator, you know, and if an employee leaves and they're multiple steps up from where they were, you know, it's a nice feeling. It's really good. You just get better and faster and more efficient and clearer from working here. That's because you basically have constant training. When you add 5% better on top of 5% better on top of 5% better, you end up so much better than everyone else. Hi, I'm Matt Goldman. I want to show you just how easy it is for a .NET developer to build a cross-platform. I think it's just about leveling up, leveling up your game. And I benefited personally, professionally, from having those rules in my life.